Thank you, Lord, for this day that thou hast made. We thank you, Lord, for the city of Danville, the administrators, the workers, and the staff who keeps our city functioning and looking beautiful. We pray tonight for your wisdom and understanding to lead us to make the right decision that it will affect our people from day to day. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I am honored to present tonight Dr. Max Lavender, treasurer. Mr. Mark Osborne, Assistant Scoutmaster, Mr. Ben McNeil, Assistant Scoutmaster, and Mr. Tommy Scott, Scoutmaster for the pledge. Mr. Scoutmaster, Mr. Scott, Troop 354, if you'd like to make some comments, sir, remarks. And introduce your troop, please. Thank you for uh, letting us be here tonight. We're Troop 354 at First Baptist Church on Main, on Main Street. Um, tonight, they are covering two requirements for two merit badges. One is communications merit badge. The other is uh, citizenship in the community. So, flag ceremony, and then they will be taking notes on what y'all are saying tonight. And they got to give me a report on, on what y'all talked about tonight. And that will cover their requirements for two eagle required merit badges. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very, very proud of you, young men. <laughs> Dr. Lasseter, will you please stand, sir? Dr. Lesseter, I won't ask you your age, but I am very glad to see that your Boy Scout uniform still fit after 30, 40, 46 years, 20 years. Wow. Thank you, sir. I am pleased to recognize at this time uh, Ms. Paulette Dean, Executive Director, Danville Area Humane Society. Ms. Dean. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of council and, and city administration. 
We are so happy to be here tonight with some good news. Now, in 2001, we announced a plan, a very um, aggressive plan, to reduce the need for euthanasia in this area. We have worked diligently since that time to bring that goal to pass. However, I believe that, that some future director will be able to announce that we are a no-kill city now. But I believe my role is to lay the foundation for future success. Tonight I have with me some very important people, the Humane Society. Mr. Lynn Shelton, who's the president of the board of directors, volunteers over 1,200 hours a year at the shelter for us. Then we have two staff members, April Hogan, our shelter manager, who has been with us for 17 years. Lisa Hannaford, our assistant shelter manager. Joni Schwartz, who my goodness helped organize the Humane Society in 1975. And then Dr. Jeff Smith, a local veterinarian who is also on our board. Now some of you may remember that in February of 2004, we came before you to defend our adoption policies when people became upset with us. At that time, in that year, we paid $15,000 to the Humane Society of the United States to conduct a comprehensive review of our programs, policies, and procedures. Their conclusion was that our adoption policies were reasonable and responsible. A lot has happened since that time, and I'd like to tell you what we've been doing. In 2007, at a cost of $250,000 of our money, we expanded the city animal shelter by building an additional 28 dog runs. In 2008, we returned to council to assist in updating the city ordinances with Mr. Whitfield. In 2009, we worked with you to pass the anti-tethering legislation. This legislation, I must tell you, has been used as a model for um, different states and different localities throughout the United States. It is still being talked about. From February of 2004 through December of 2011, this is what else we've been doing. We have received 26,514 cats, 15,175 dogs, 26 livestock, 696 other companion animals, and 205 poultry for a total number of animals served, 42,616. During that same time, we spent, through the Easter of James Grant Charitable Trust, $274,000 on spay-neuter programs for residents of Danville and Pennsylvania <coughs> County. We've expanded our volunteer program, and now we have a solid core of faithful volunteers who offer uh, shelter enrichment for the animals. Since February of 2004, I can tell you there has never been one minute pass that we have not been on call for the animals. We have conducted or assisted in neglect and cruelty investigations, have helped in many rescues of animals, have given hundreds of humane presentations, have written articles and columns, have gone to Richmond several times to testify either for or against animal legislation, and even helped form and organize an alliance of open access shelters in Virginia. We continue to, according to the state veterinarian records, be among the top three shelters in Virginia in the number of animals received. We have expanded our transfer program to rescue groups and high adoption shelters, and I am pleased as all get out to tell you tonight that during the first quarter of 2012, we have adopted or transferred more dogs than we euthanized, and that is a first in Danville. We are very, very, very thrilled to come before you tonight to give the city of Danville a gift, an adoption center that has been added onto the existing shelter. This is our no-kill adoption center. We will remain open admission. We will never turn away any animal. We never have and we never will. However, animals that are healthy and do not have behavioral problems can be transferred into the East Stewart James Grant Adoption Center and they will remain there until they are adopted. The center cost us $450,000 to build and furnish. $250,000 of it came from the East Stewart James Grant Charitable Trust and the rest came from donations and fundraisers. As we neared completion of the shelter, we realized we needed more money to purchase cages, bowls, equipment, beds, toys, and to pay for additional construction costs that came about when problems were uncovered. 
At that time, we unexpectedly received a $60,000 gift from a woman, Marguerite Mitchell, who helped form the Humane <coughs> Society. She died about three years ago, and we were named in her will. We believe that the Danville Area Humane Society and the City of Danville are the perfect example of public-private partnerships. Along the way in building this no-kill adoption center, we must tell you that we have had nothing but cooperation. Joe King, David Parrish, Richard Trezenovich, David Brandon, Eric Chambers, and Sheriff Mondul never, never said no to any request that we had. We invite you to come to the Adoption Center this Saturday from 12 to 3 o'clock, and approved adoption questionnaires that are turned in that day will receive a reduced adoption fee. Now, we, debate, we debated what to present to you tonight as a gift. We thought puppies and kittens would be the ideal gift, but wondered if you'd really appreciate it. So we opted to decide on keychains <coughs> with our logo made from, the, from Dan River Wood. You will see two keys on these chains. The two keys represent our two-prong approach to decreasing euthanasia. One is spaying and neutering, and two, adoption of animals. We are very grateful to be able to tell you that Danville <coughs> now has a no-kill adoption center where we can hold many more animals and give them a chance at second life. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dane, and I'll ask counsel if we have any questions. One quick observation, a board member volunteering 1,200 hours per year, 2,080 hours is considered a work year. So he's really working part-time on a full-time basis, so to speak. He works at Goodyear, and every day he's off, he comes to the shelter. He is also a court-appointed humane investigator in Danville. Um, he is an all-around good person. He has climbed 50 feet up into a tree to, to capture of all things an iguana. He, he does whatever is necessary. He's, we couldn't do it without him. Wonderful. Thank you. Question, comment for Ms. Dean? I mean, council member, Dr. Miller? Uh, sorry, thank you for what you do. I'm the servant of four dogs and two cats. Notice I didn't say the owner. Uh, four of which are uh, rescue uh, animals, and we certainly appreciate what you do uh, for the city. My question is, I'm, I'm been sort of concerned about animal control officers. We're down to one. Uh, is that sufficient, your idea? Do you all? I will tell you he is very, very busy, um, but we have found that the police department fills in the cracks. We, we help also go out and capture stray animals. Do we need another full-time officer? Yes, we do. The police department, though, is very good about helping. And thanks for the keys. Will this get the council out of the doghouse on the budget here? <laughs> no, actually, um, your shift starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mr. <laughs> Dummer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, while we have you here, um, Mr. Dean, thank you, first of all, for all your hard work on behalf of uh, the animals in our city and, and surrounding community. Last time uh, you came before council, I believe council, what I felt like, did something very progressive in banning the chaining of animals. Uh, how is that going in the city? Enforcement, how, how do you see that? playing out since we passed that ordinance. It is wonderful. The naysayers said that it was an unenforceable ordinance. Not true. There have been many, many convictions. <coughs> there are hundreds less dog, fewer dogs on chains now. We gave away um, or helped people purchase many dog lots. Um, only two people turned in dogs because they heard about the tethering, anti-tethering ordinance. Even though people said there would be hundreds turned in, only two had been turned in. We did everything in our power to keep those dogs with the owner. We offered free spay and neuter. We offered to give them a dog lot. And their reaction each time was, they're not worth it. So they turned them in. So other than that, it sounds like it's, it's been a good ordinance. It is a wonderful ordinance, good. yes. Thank you for your assistance okay. on that. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Um, Mr. Shanks. Yes, uh, I too would like to thank you for all of the hard work that you and your volunteers do uh, for the city and the area. Uh, and I also want to congratulate you for raising that much money, $200,000 in addition to the 250000 that was given by the Stuart James uh, uh, gifts. So congratulations on that and thank you. Thank you very much. And I will tell you, donations come a dollar at a time. 
Okay, other question comments? Thank you so much for all you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next be an update on Dan Regional Medical Center from the CEO, <laughs> Mr. Eric Deaton. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council members, good to see you tonight. Um, from a primary care standpoint, access to primary care, we uh, hopefully will be breaking ground on our uh, Highway 41 clinic. Um, we have signed a contract with the developer there and are moving forward to break ground on that clinic later this month. It will be similar to our, our Brazel clinic. Uh, the Brazel clinic, by the way, is, being, is very successful, uh, as well as our weekend clinic that we have uh, open to patients for urgent care needs on the weekends. Uh, also, we are uh, moving forward with our strategic plan in Gretna to uh, replace that clinic later this year, early 2013. We're working with local officials in that part of the county to help replace that as well. Um, very happy to announce that Danville Regional Medical Center has been given full accreditation for the Society of Chest Pain Centers uh, as a fully accredited chest pain center. And what that means for us is that we have met certain criteria uh, to take care of, of heart attack patients and patients that have chest pain uh, more effectively in the hospital, but also effectively working with e local EMS to do that. One thing we've been able to do is, is, is allow uh, the 12 lead EKG to be done in the field and then that uh, information be transmitted to the hospital so we can get that information ahead of time before the patient arrives there. We can be ready for that patient. If they're having a heart attack, we can call our cardiologist appropriately and have them on standby as well. So that's a, that's a great thing for our city and for our, 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 our county and for our patients. Um, also, uh, Legacy Hospice of the Piedmont is our, is our hospice uh, provider. Uh, received full accreditation from the Joint Commission, um, and they did not have any deficiencies or any findings. And the, uh, the lady who did the accreditation said that's the first time that she had ever uh, performed an accreditation without any findings at all. So we're very proud of that. We're also uh, now certified by Medicare and have met the Medicare certifications as a, uh, as a uh, hospice uh, program. Our uh, continuing medical education program is uh, run by Dr. Michael Moore, uh, received accreditation through the Medical Society of Virginia uh, with commendation. And uh, we're one of, one of only four in the whole state of Virginia that are hospital-based uh, continuing medical education programs. So we're very proud of that. Our nursing program continues to be very successful. We're working hard with DCC and with AVERIT to transition into expanded programs there. I'm very happy to announce that our overall nursing pass rate was 92.6%. Uh, just by comparison, the state of Virginia pass rate was 87% and the national average is 88%. So we're higher than national and the Virginia averages uh, for nursing accreditation and, uh, and passing. Uh, we received some local awards as well, um, readership awards from the Register MB and the Showcase Magazine. Uh, very happy that the uh, Diagnostic Imaging Center received a leadership award locally. Um, and. Uh, we're all kind of keeping our eye on Medicare reform or uh, health care reform and what's going to happen there that could have an impact financially on the hospital in, in the years to come. Our concern, obviously, is are we uh, ensuring more people with the same amount of, of, uh, of dollars to spend, so we're keeping an eye on, on how that's working. Um, we're very happy about the residency program. It's, it's really becoming very successful. Um, the residency program will expand from 35 residents that we have today to 50 residents uh, the 1st of July of this year. So just so you know the type of impact that has, that's about $3.7 million uh, economic impact in salaries and benefits alone uh, by those having those residents here in our community. It's like a small business opening of uh, maybe not so small with 50 brand new employees being here. Uh, and they're here for at least three years typically. And, and our goal is to try and keep as many of those residents in our community. This is the second year of our residency program and we already have signed three residents to stay in our community to be doctors living here in the future. So we're very proud of that. I'm happy to announce uh, a couple leadership changes. Uh, Teresa Pruitt, who's with me tonight, is our uh, newly named patient safety officer. It's a new role that we have. Teresa's been with us for 20, 27 years, so short timer, but we're going to try to get her worked <laughs> into the job. Uh, <laughs> Teresa does an amazing job, and, and she's being very proactive in making sure we're safe and the way we take care of our patients. That's actually a partnership we have with Duke Medicine now, and very glad that Teresa's in that role. Um, we're conducting a healthcare industry roundtable uh, later this week with local industry to, to work with them on healthcare costs. And uh, then Chick-fil-A has a leadership cast uh, in the month of May 
that we are actually paying for and, and supporting locally. And we're inviting health care or all leaders in from the community to participate in that. There will be a leadership cast, uh, Samuel cast out of Atlanta. There will be speakers such as uh, John Maxwell, Tim Tebow, uh, Urban Meyer, and Andy Stanley will be speaking uh, on leadership. And so we're going to sponsor this, invite local leaders in, and the proceeds will go to the local United Way campaign. Um, we're very excited about that, that opportunity uh, because we are the United Way uh, campaign chair for 2012 and happy about that as well. Um, we have three new physicians we've added this quarter. Um, Dr. Emma Kulwa, who is a OBGYN joining Dr. Beaver's group. We're very happy to have her amazing lady out of, out of New York living here now. Dr. Aleem Khan is uh, in private practice, a psychiatrist, and uh, certainly a need in this area for behavioral health support. And then uh, Dr. Dr. Benicia Ramia is an oncologist who has joined Dr. Brotherton's group, who is uh, doing a, a fantastic job for us. Very glad to have her. Uh, and so I've left a handout for you uh, tonight and uh, would certainly entertain any questions that you might have. Thank you. Question or comment, Mr. Campbell? Yes, uh, Mr. Deacon, uh, once again, I'd like to state we are very appreciative of your work, transparency, but also I would like for you to address the issue of taxes that come back into our community, especially in times like this in reference to the budget. The hospital is a major contributor to taxes in our community. We and are the mortgages to the doctor residents that here. You know, we do pay, we're one of the, I think the second largest taxpayer uh, locally and um, um, it is, it, we're proud of that. Um, I think that happened after the sale of the hospital when you go from a non-for-profit to a for-profit or taxpaying entity. Uh, then we do make a significant uh, uh, investment in the, in the city. Uh, we're very proud of that, that uh, uh, opportunity to do that, and I uh, think it's our responsibility to do that. So we're happy about the impact that we do make. Um, I think it's around $800,000 a year, if I remember correctly, uh, the amount of, of taxes that are paid uh, city county. Uh, and just to go along with that, we, we did a study about a year ago, and the hospital has an economic impact. <coughs> Uh, city and statewide of $200 million annually. So there's, uh, that's, that's an amazing amount of uh, impact that it makes uh, as an economic engine locally. Well, once again, I appreciate your continuing coming back to council to make your reports. It means a lot to us. Thank, thank you, you, sir. you so much. Mr. Jones. I just want to personally say thank you. I had a personal experience with the emergency room. And just in case people who are watching and listening want to know an update, I'm going to testify about the emergency room. Um, my mother had to go to the emergency room about two weeks ago, and everything was phenomenal. There was many questions in the community before I got on council about the emergency room. The service and everything was phenomenal. Uh, last Sunday, Miss Eddie, I'm sure she don't mind me saying this, her family called early that morning and said, we got to carry mama to the emergency room. Everything was phenomenal, not only for our families, but to see the number of people coming out to the emergency room, explain to everyone how things are going, and just in a matter of about an hour, everything was completely cleared out. And I just want to say on behalf of my family and the Eddie family and so many families, what you all have done in that emergency room is amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so sir. Much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Dr. Miller? Uh, yeah, I just want to reemphasize something you said. I'm a big, big advocate of the residency program. Think of this. If tomorrow we announce that we had a new business employing 50 people at average salary of $50,000 a piece and $3.7 million would be ecstatic. And that's what that residency program brings. Uh, plus they spend money, they fill up the apartments downtown, they shop, uh, they've helped increase the population of the downtown for the first time in 10 years. Our population has gone up and down the last year. This last year. Uh, and these are self-perpetuating. These people finish their three years of training, others fill in. So it's a constant number. So we really thank you for what you've done developing that residency program. Thank you. And we've actually had local developers come to us and, and work with us on what are the needs of the residents as they look at looking for apartments downtown. And so they're, the local developers are working very closely to make sure that they're meeting the needs of our residents. But uh, we're, we're proud of it. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Jay. Eric, uh, I've said thank you many times for what you've done, so I won't repeat uh, that now. <clears throat> but I did uh, recall last year uh, you mentioned the Danville Cancer Association walk when you were here, and it was, must have been about this time of year. It was. As you probably know, the Danville Cancer Association walk 
bridge to bridge walk is, is this coming Saturday. Yes, sir. Can you update us how the hospitals participate? Yeah, we're the uh, we're the lead sponsor on, on that program again this year. We have several of our employees and staff members that will be walking and running and uh, participating in that. So. Uh, uh, the Danville Cancer Society is a wonderful organization, and we, we think it's important to contribute to them, especially because uh, the dollars stay here locally in our community. Uh, so we feel like that helping them is, is key to us, and we're, we're proud to be a sponsor, be the, the title sponsor for that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let me also thank you, Mr. Deaton, for being consistent. From the first time you came to council, you said what you would do, keep us informed, updated, and you do that. What's interesting is you always call me to get on the agenda as opposed to me reminding you. And we really appreciate that. And this report card, very, very impressive. Very Thanks. impressive. So we appreciate all that you do, but especially the men and women who work for you. Okay? So thank you so much to you, your staff, and the community. Really appreciate your services. If you'd like to introduce your security detail, we'd like to we will. Uh, have uh, Leslie Smith with us, who is our director of community services, and uh, Kelly Fitzgerald is our director of marketing with us tonight. Mr. Mayor, may I mention one more thing? Yes, I, I forgot to mention that in the month of May is hypertension month, and uh, you're not supposed to get hypertension. We're going to try and help help treat that. So, working with with the health health department, we're going to be focusing on. Uh, we're going to try and have 10,000. Um, blood pressure tests performed in the city and county in the month of May. And we have about 100,000 people that live in our community, and so we want to test 10,000 people for possibly hypertension. That's just a, a blood pressure screening. So uh, working with Dr. Rimley from the state level and our local health department, we hope to make that. So maybe the next time we come, uh, we can come in May and check your blood pressure <laughs> as part of that screening. So thank you, Mr. Okay, Mayor. and let me say again that uh, Dr. Miller and I and Sheriff Mondul and others Really enjoyed being a part of the uh, chili. To the uh, cook -off. Cook -off. It was. About 16 entries. You were very and brave to do that. And, and, and we are so thankful that you were not one of those who entered. A lot of people thankful for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, an update on the Institute of Anthony Research from Dr. Liam Lightly and from uh, Frank Della Pia, Junior Tech. Welcome, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Councilman. I'd like to, uh, to give you an update on the Institute, and especially with regard to the very strong uh, partnership that we have with Virginia Tech. Recently, uh, five of our research faculty from the Mechanical Engineering Department at Virginia Tech uh, will relocate to Blacksburg. And one of the reasons there is that uh, part of their program was to build up infrastructure, especially in the auto engineering area, which they successfully did. And that particular enterprise, uh, based at BIR, will be managed by the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute, so a Virginia Tech uh, arm, uh, an institute there. The institute will still carry out programs of research in that area, and we are also looking for new areas of research. And last Friday I was visiting with Tech and already identifying new programs of research to build on the portfolio of research activities that we've got. And to give you an example of how that growth will occur, uh, about a year ago the Institute stood at, on a daily basis, 70 people. ILR staff, governor school children, students would be on our, what we like to call now our campus. When I asked for a number uh, to be run just recently, it now stands at about 196. And we expect that to grow, especially with developments we've got in our new building, to in excess of 200 uh, people on our campus on a, on a regular basis. So together with the work that our ILR scientists are doing, our new collaborative programs, and also ongoing programs which are being uh, developed at VIR, we see that we're growing stronger uh, and attracting funding and attracting scientists in. 
To add to my comments, I'd like to introduce Dr. Frank Delapia. Dr. Delapia is the executive director for the new uh, National Tire Research Center, which is not only involved in tire testing, but will manage some of the assets that uh, we incubated and put together. I'd like to ask Frank to make some comments, and then I'd be happy to answer questions, and I'm sure Frank will. Welcome, Dr. Pia, and I apologize for not using that doctor the first time. Oh, that's, that's totally fine. Um, thanks for having me. As uh, Liam said, um, I'm the executive director of the National Tire Research Center. We are building a $11.3 million force and moment machine. Um, it is on schedule. It's being built in Eden Prairie, Minnesota by a company um, called MTS. That's on schedule to be delivered on uh, this September 2012. Um, we are starting construction of the building for the addition to what once was called the Jouster Building out at VIR to uh, house that uh, machine. We've hired two director level people just this week um, to begin the execution of an operation of the, of the force a moment tire testing as well as math modeling, simulation work, rolling resistance work, which is relative to energy loss and, and things of that nature. So I think we're gonna far exceed um, what the expectations were from a job creation standpoint out there. Um, we're way ahead of schedule. Um, we're testing with uh, an, a prominent American tire company um, that supplies all of the tires to NASCAR. We'll be doing all of their testing. And um, we're just real excited and um, we're growing faster than I would have ever imagined. So do you have any questions? Any questions or comments from council members? Questions or comments? I mean, I could get into all kinds of engineering gobbledygook and things, but... We well, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put everybody to sleep and... Other questions or comments? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Dr. Lightley, do you have more? No. Do you have more, no, Dr. Lightley? Do you have more? More comments? Yes, sir. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Under communication, those who wish to speak on any item not listed on the agenda will be heard at this time. If you wish to speak on any item listed on the agenda, you will be heard when that item is considered. Anyone wish to speak? Yes, sir. Excuse me for the old teleprompter days, but I had uh, the old habits die hard on this, okay? My name is Bruce Hedrick. I reside at 25 Old Halifax Road in Danville. I'd like to speak greetings to the council tonight. I'd like to speak about Danville Utilities. I am now employed as a customer service rep for Dominion through Faneuil in South Boston. I believe that there are ample opportunities to improve Danville Utilities in the realm of customer service. The past round of fee increases at the Danville Utility Commission have, been, have not been very well known by the public, and a lot of Danville Utility customers have never noticed them because they pay their bills on time. However, for the increasing number of Danville Utilities customers that are experiencing financial difficulties, the new and increased fees are becoming back-breaking. Currently, Danville Utilities charges $50 additional to any account that is more than 35 days past due. If the account is disconnected for non-payment, an additional $50 fee is charged to reconnect the services after the past due amount is paid. Now, when these fees were done, Mr. King, city manager at the time, spoke to the Danville Register and being was quoted that these fees are designed to be punitive. I find that to be offensive, especially to the people in Danville who are really trying to pay their bills and they don't have their money. I understand that Danville Utilities does have some people that just wait to the last possible day. For that, the word punitive should apply. However, to the people that are actually struggling to pay their bills, I believe that Danville Utilities should work more in the realm of customer service. Now, as a Dominion customer service representative, I personally am empowered to go outside of the company policies when I feel it's in the best interest of both the company and the customer. Now, Danville Central Collections Office enforces the policies on the book without any care and compassion for the customer and their needs. And I can say that personally as I've dealt with that side of it. Although there's nothing procedurally wrong with that directive, it's wrong on moral grounds. 
I ask that the Danville City Council, the city manager, and the utility staff try to open up their hearts to the Danville Utilities customers by establishing a set of guidelines that will minimize losses but help their customers in their time of need. I suggest that they look in best practices from utility companies that rank high in customer service, like Dominion. Customer service at the Danville utility side is good. However, when you walk over to the Department of Central Collections, it's quite horrible. Mayor Saunders, sometimes when people have came and talked about utilities commissions and utility rates and everything, you've said we're listening. And I do believe that the City Council is listening. However, now is a time, especially in this campaign season, for City Council to lead, the part, to lead this and actually make some changes for the good of Danville Utility customers. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gisrat. <clears throat> what, uh, comparing Dominion rates with the city of Danville rates, how would that compare? Pretty fair, pretty even on that. Dominion has just increased rates, in fact, on April the 1st. We got a rate increase on some certain riders for some power garden, for, the, for some power stations we have. But our rates are pretty well comparable. It's the customer service where is the difference. How about the late fees? How would that compare? The late fees, especially the fees that we had right there today, I took care of and I reconnect for a customer who was disconnected for non-payment. Of course, I ensure that we got a pass through amount. I was able to work inside the policies. But I charged the customer $23.70. Now, this happened to be a customer in Charlottesville who has the advanced meter in infrastructure that Danville has. I was able to issue the reconnect from my office, and the meter was turned on within a few minutes that way. The same policies that Danville has. Remember, Danville now with the AMI infrastructure does not have to send a worker out unless, I believe, Mr. King, you did say that they are doing it now for safety reasons. However, the disconnection can be done at the central office simply that way. And Bruce, do you have any idea of the, what, the poverty level that you serve? Our service area runs anywhere from the Richmond to the Northern Virginia areas to areas in Pennsylvania County as well, too. I do not have those numbers based on what we have there. However, I can tell you as a credit representative, I have been credit trained on it. I get a predominantly the part of what we call our you know, customers that have trouble paying. They, the people that have a good time paying, that have no problem whatsoever, simply they don't call us. Okay, okay Ms. Campbell. Yes, uh, thank you for addressing that issue. We brought that up several months ago, and I understand the plight. What I'd like for right now, if it's possible, Mr. King, could you address this issue in reference to the fees, please? Uh, <clears throat> the, first of all, this is taken to the Utility Commission, was reviewed by the Utility Commission. One piece of information not mentioned is that uh, a couple years ago, the amount of time to pay the bill was extended by 15 days. So Danville customers have 51 days from the rendering of the bill to the payment before uh, cutoff is, is made for non-payment. Uh, there's always been a penalty. Uh, there's always been a reconnect fee. Uh, those were upwardly adjusted last year. So it is $50 for the penalty and $50 for the reconnection. Uh, the customer does not have to pay the reconnection fee uh, to get the power restored. That's counted in the next bill. Uh, the Utility Commission considered all the information and determined that the current policy should stay in place. That was reported to the City Council. The City Council was asked uh, if the Council wanted to revisit that. Uh, the Council decided it did not. Uh, the number of customers that are experiencing cutoffs is actually down this year from last. So the extended amount of time available is making a difference. Uh, the one thing the Utility Commission asked, which has been put in place, is that the bills clearly state the actual dollar uh, penalties, instead of just a reference to penalties, the actual dollar penalties so there's no confusion on the customer's part about that. It is important to know that the customer before a cutoff is made has received at least two written warnings that that will happen if the payment is not made. 
No one wants a light gray, sir. I'd like to follow up on another thing. One other thing Mr. King's saying is true, and again, I did omit some details as I wrote the speech quickly on it. One other policy that the, I could think that could be revisiting is the part where it says clearly on the bill, no extensions can be granted after 30 days. As a Dominion customer service representative, I have the authority and the empowerment, in fact, can even be going to my supervisors on this as well, too, what's necessary, to extend a payment plan with an adequate down payment where we would extend it to a six-month time frame to actually work with the customer. They'd pay their existing bill and we would cut the existing, the balance they have up into six parts and add it to the existing bill. We would secure the company's interest on that by establishing a larger down payment. But my issue is with utilities that I found is the major problem is a lot of the houses are not well organized. <coughs> Sir. That's a major problem. That's my Mr. Jenkins. Uh, Bruce, thank you for bringing this up again. Uh, it was just a couple months ago the Utility Commission looked at this, and it was true, is true, that it was reported back to Council. And I don't recall any other actions being taken. Whether uh, I think their report was accepted and no, no other action was taken. Uh, but during your presentation, you mentioned best management practices with regard to this particular issue. Is there a publication of best management practices that you're aware of for as utility? A, as a basic Dominion employee at the credit level, I, don't, I do not know. However, I would assume since our CEO goes to these conferences and things like that, that there has to be somewhere in there. In every other industry that I've known, there usually is a self-improvement. We use Six Sigma Dig at Dominion to continually improve our process as well, too. I don't have the answer to that, but I think that I would assume the answer is yes, sir. Okay, and one follow-up on that, Councilman Shanks. One th the other issue is the customer service issue through the Department of Central Collections. I believe that care and compassion should be a part of this as well, too. Sometimes it's like dealing with a group of automatons out there in that part where they must come and they must do what's on the policies. If there is a way to work with the customer, face it, folks, we've got to have electricity to live. We're going to pay soon. Very, I'm, I'm hoping that Danville doesn't have a big skip rate when it comes to that. Mr. Jones. Um, Bruce, thank you and congratulations on your new job. Thank you, sir. My question, Mr. Mayor, I have two. What would be the possible, how will we present revisiting this again, or can we present revisiting this again? Because there's much concern about it. Mr. King, you did do exactly what we asked you to do, and I actually saw the letter. That's the first question to me. May I have a question? is yes, we can revisit it again, and it's often as council chose to do so. Yes, sir, thank you. The next question, um, Mr. King, is customer service. Um, not only has Bruce presented this, but I, we talked about this a long time, and what do we need to do? Uh, we do attempt to provide customer training, and I'm not debating that there are going to be instance, instances where customers feel like they're not being treated appropriately. Uh, we do have constant customer training, uh, and I think we need to understand on the other side of the counter, it's a very challenging experience for the uh, cashier that receives that money. Uh, one point on, on the payment uh, arrangements, uh, we thought through that very carefully and did away with payment arrangements in lieu of providing more time to make payment. Um, you, you do not see lines of people uh, going out of the customer, uh, uh, the collections area out into the, the foyer and even outside anymore because we don't do uh, extensions and we made that very clear. I think as far as best practices go, I can assure you uh, we collected data from dozens of other utilities before uh, developing our policies. And I, I don't know that you intend for Bruce and I to be in a debate here, no, uh, no. but I would stand our policies up against uh, any other public sector utility. Uh, and, and say there's always room for improvement, but our policies are definitely based on what I consider to be best practices. My, my two intentions are, number one, as you stated, not for you and Bruce to get in a debate, but it's been stated that we don't act.
That's the first intention. Right. The second intention is not because it's, it's election season, as Bruce mentioned, right. it's time for election. It's about what can we do best for our city. And I'll close with that, Mr. Right. Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And one follow-up on that I do have on it. As a Dominion, excuse, 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 oh, excuse, sorry, excuse, sorry. Excuse, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Bruce, I have a teleprompter, too, if you don't mind. Uh, that was well-written material, and it's something for all of us to think about. Depends on what side of the table you're on, as, as our city manager said, as to how, what experience you have. I was just looking at comments about your company, and it says your website doesn't even have the telephone number, and the local phone book doesn't have a number to call. They're well insulated. Another person, a separate person, trying to pay online is impossible. Trying to talk to a human at Dominion is also impossible. Another person. In addition, they're extremely rude. I won't read the details, but it's very similar to what you were just talking about. And another person. Customer service does not exist at Dominion Power. So I hope now that you're there, these comments that were made before you were there will change. Mr. Luther, I, can, I appreciate those comments. I can tell you after 42 days on the floor, I lead our unit. I have 14 customer compliments for my customer service, and I am on the other side of the issue. I work on the side. I grant the arrangements. I work with the customers. I issue the reconnects. We are making a difference with Dominion, and I hope the customer service part can work with the Danville Utilities customers. I appreciate it. Do you have more, Mr. Lutz, Mr. Mayor? No, that's all. Thank you. Mr. Hedrick, uh, in your presentation, you expressed concern about the $50 fee uh, on both ends, correct? Yes, you also expressed concern about extending the fee, a cutoff period, an extension of time to cut off period. Right. As in, were, were there any other primary points you were making? I got those two. The uh, possibility for reopening payment arrangements or payment plans so that, that would part work with customers. Is that part of the $50 one? That would be a separate part. The bills now say. Okay, so um, reconsider the payment plan. Yes. Okay, is there a fourth or fifth? Best practices, customer service, and that's it. We thank you, sir. My pleasure. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Okay. Uh, the minutes, approval of minutes, regular council meeting held on March the 6th, 2012. There a motion to approve, Dr. Miller. Is there a second? Mr. Campbell, discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Luther. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Toma. Aye. Approval of minutes, uh, I'm sorry, consideration of granting an easement to a portion of Newton's Landing parking lot Parcel 26549, the Industrial Development Authority, to be used for the placement of solid waste containers to serve tenants in the old Delt 1 building. I open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? I close the public hearing. Council of Pleasure, Mr. Shanks. Yes, Mayor, I move for adoption of a resolution granting an easement to a portion of parcel 26549, the parking lot commonly known as Newton Landing, to the Industrial Development Authority of Danville, Virginia. A second, Mr. Campbell. Discussion of the motion, Madam Clerk. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Luther. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Tomer. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Uh, Who is requesting the Danville Urbanized Area Metropolitan Planning Organization to apply for Federal Transit Administration Section 5303 Transportation Planning Funds for the Danville Transit System? Is there a motion? Mr. Shanks. Yes, Mayor. I move for adoption of a resolution requesting the Danville Urbanized Area Metropolitan Planning Organization to apply to the Federal Transit Administration Section 5303 Transportation Planning Funds. Yes. Second. Mr. Campbell. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Luther. Aye. Dr. Dr. Miller. Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Tomer? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Communication, Mr. Manager? Uh, for the benefit of citizens watching on River City TV by cable or internet, I'd just like to draw their attention to the fact that our budget proposed fiscal year two thir 2013 budget uh, and our capital improvements plan were released last week and they are available online as well as in hard copy at the public library. 
Uh, the City Council will take the next three months uh, reviewing the budget, listening to the public uh, before adopting some version of a budget uh, by the end of June for the fiscal year that begins the 1st of July. And I know the Council uh, are very anxious to hear from the public about their views on the budget. So again, it is online and in hard copy at the library. A uh, second item, Mr. Mayor, is uh, we went through a uh, experience last week with our boil water alert, uh, and we apologize for the inconvenience and the concern raised over that issue. Uh, we do our best to ensure we have absolutely clean drinking water we hope that event never happens again, but we give you our pledge that uh, you'll always have clean water coming out of your tap. And if we have to issue a boil water advisory in the future, uh, we'll do so. But we appreciate the fact that people were inconvenienced and concerned last week, and thank you for bearing with us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turney. Uh, nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk? Nothing, sir. Please call the roll. Reverend Campbell? Yes, briefly, uh, I just want to thank the city for dealing with the issue of the boil water uh, and getting the word out to the community. We really do appreciate that. But for the last 30 days, we lost two Dan Vidians that really work hard within our community. That's uh, Ms. Nancy Gerardic and Mr. Severin Pritchett. I just want to state briefly that uh, we would miss them for their work within the community. On yesterday was a, a great day in the city of Danville. We had the opportunity to go to the fire station on Bridge Street where the New York Fire Department representatives came down and they brought a piece of steel from the World Trade Center. This piece of steel weighed over 2,000 pounds that will be placed in the new fire station for the city of Danville. It was a very emotional setting and I was just appreciative to see the connection between the firemen in New York and the firemen here. We have a great city. I love this city. I love the community. I think that we're moving forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Gilstrap. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, I uh, would like to thank the Boy Scouts for uh, coming to the council meeting. I hope it was educational for you. It's, uh, we don't usually have quite as much discussion as we did tonight on issues, but thank you. And y'all did a beautiful job of presenting the colors. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. To Troop 354s, you have to take notes, so I'm going to go real slow so you can <laughs> pass your test. Sitting in front of you is our superintendent of school, Dr. Sue Davis, and the assistant superintendent, Dr. Osborne. And I know on behalf of us, as well as them, you all did a fantastic job tonight. Put that in your notes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor Luther. Glad to see the scouts here, and uh, it always brings back the days, Sherman, you recall when you were a scout and how many fingers you use as you get older to salute. But uh, it's always good to know that, that young people are interested, even if they're forced to come here or they came voluntarily, they're going to get two badges, uh, and I think it's great. But uh, I also appreciate the hospital report. I'm sorry he's already gone, but it, it's good. Um, that was something that was missing here for a while, and even when we re requested it, we didn't get it. But now we get it, as you say, without even asking. And that's, that's very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Miller? Well, I guess for every cloud there's a silver lining. I can guarantee a lot more people have bottled water in their house now. Uh, you know, as we heard a couple of weeks ago, disaster planning, you have to be ready. You have to have water, flashlights, food for several days. Look what's happened again and again across the country. Tornadoes, storms. In Virginia last year, it was the second highest number of tornadoes on record. If you're not ready, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, you know, for the grace of God, this could happen here, and maybe we'll have it one day. So you have to be ready for disasters. I think the city did a good job. We heard a nice explanation at, uh, of, of the perfect storm, what happened at, at the uh, utilities meeting the other day, and just a combination of a lot of water runoff and, and some pumps failing in Eden and some pumps failing here and, uh, uh, you know, just overwhelming the system. Uh, you know, we learned from that, and I think we'll do better in the future. But you have to be prepared because potentially some of these cities lost water and power for weeks. And so you have to be ready. Citizens have a burden themselves to be ready. Not just complain, but be ready for disasters. So 
I think the city did a good job of getting things back together. Uh, secondly, I went to the uh, Woods and Water. It was the first annual Woods and Water uh, uh, affair on Saturday. I thought that was a good show for the uh, community center. Uh, a lot of uh, boat distributors had their boats there, people you know, uh, hunting things, fishing <coughs> things. They had a demonstration fishing, bass catching tank, and I think I learned a few lessons. I hope I can put to use on bait uh, casting. But uh, these are the kind of things we need for the city. Uh, meetings that draw people in and uh, uh, promote uh, Danville and the surrounding area. And uh, I think that's all I'd say. Thank you. Mr. Raleigh, Mr. Shanks. What you guys are learning today, you'll carry with you throughout your life. And I appreciate you going through the scouting process. And you certainly did a wonderful job this evening in presenting the colors. Also wanted to thank Lim Lightly for being here with an update from the Institute. I think what's going on at the Institute uh, is just a mystery to 90% of our population. And I know y'all are working uh, to get the word out, but it's just amazing what all is going on out there. And I appreciate the invite, uh, the, the uh, update. I, uh, I was somewhat concerned when I heard that the mechanical engineering folks were moving out of town, but I'm glad that there are other things going on. Of course, I had no idea you had so many people working out there now. That goes along with just so much information and things going on that people don't know about. But appreciate the, end, the uh, update. The manager mentioned that this, the budget's on the, uh, on the website. Uh, I've already heard from quite a few people, and I encourage those that have contacted me to contact other members of council and those that have not taken the opportunity. This budget every year has an impact on your lives. So I hope that uh, the citizens will become engaged and uh, give council members, all of them, not individual ones, but all of them, some guidance and help them come through and develop this year's budget. Last thing, Mayor, I'd like to I mention it when Eric Deaton was here, the Danville Cancer Association Bridge to Bridge <coughs> Marathon Walk, whatever you want to call it, is this weekend. I certainly, uh, I'm looking forward to participating, and I encourage other citizens to do so. I know it was a huge turnout last year, and I'm looking forward to another successful event this year. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Yes, I'd like to also thank the, the Boy Scouts for coming here. You did an excellent job. Thank you for being part of the process. I uh, also want to thank the hospital and uh, Mr. Deaton for continuing to come here and give us updates. Uh, we've heard some good news on another subject from the Humane Society and Paulette Dean and her work. And if you need a friend at home, go adopt a pet. There's certainly a, a lot there that, that need a good home, and I encourage that. Uh, the boil water notice. Uh, I know a lot of citizens were upset about that and received a lot of calls, a lot of comments. I appreciate the hard work on the city to try to get that corrected. Uh, but I would, I would like to, and I believe in the work session, I think we're going to hear a little bit more on it. I've heard uh, some citizens have asked me whether uh, the issue started in Eden with sewage from Eden getting into the river and possibly spreading E. coli, and that's why we had the boil notice. And I think citizens don't feel like they're getting the whole truth. And so hopefully uh, in the work session afterwards, we can kind of, I would like to hear some more information on it. But we survived it. And as Mr. Uh, Dr. Miller said, we always need to be prepared. We never know when the next disaster is going to hit. So uh, I do thank the citizens and, the, and Barry and his staff for working hard to get the water issue resolved. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Mayor Saunders. I'd like to also thank the Boy Scout Troop 354 for your excellent presentation. And I hope that one day all of you are sitting around the table here or in Washington, okay? And you can if you choose to do that. Thank you so much. <clears throat> also, I would like to thank Dr. Lightley and Dr. Pia, as well as uh, Paulette Dean and Eric Dean for, for that presentation. To follow up on City Manager's comments regarding the water issue last week, I, too, would like to formally apologize to all citizens, all visitors, 
everyone who used Danville water. We apologize for that. It happened, as best I understand it, through no fault of our own. We did not cause it. It's not our fault. But it happened. And I am sorry for the inconvenience. We're going to have a very thorough discussion on that at our work session once this meeting um, adjourned. I thought it interesting, the very first call that I received last Monday, the very first call was, Mr. Mayor, is it true that the whole city is shut down? That was the very first call. And about 80% of all calls followed that up until I tried to go to bed at midnight that night. <laughs> so we understand things happen. Also interesting how some of us process information. Well, we'll have that conversation. We regret it happened. It was not our fault, okay? We're sorry, but tonight we'll talk about that and we'll, we'll talk about lessons learned. Council members, thank you so much. City employee, thank you. Citizen, thank you so much. Meeting adjourned. And thank you.